All right, so talking about uh, cladistics here, um, we can show evolutionary history based on a couple of things, amino acid sequences, um, and a, what a, let's see, yeah, base or amino acid. So base is the DNA letters, okay? Um, we'll get into this later, but every DNA is made out of a nucleotide and it's shaped uh, like this. Actually, hold on. Let me go try that again. There we go. Da, 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 da. And then we got so phosphate, sugar, nitrogen, base. And you remember, maybe remember that from freshman year. So our DNA, A, 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 T, T, C, C, G, 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 um, uh, C, C, whatever it is. Um, this is what a base sequence is. is the DNA letters um, standing in for this part of the nucleotide that's bonded in the middle with those hydrogen bonds. The amino acid sequences, remember, <coughs> DNA gets converted. Let me write down here. DNA gets converted into the RNA which then converts into an amino acid sequence, um, also known as a protein eventually. So amino acid sequence is the order of amino acids in a protein. And that order depends on the DNA or whatever the gene is telling it to do. So in a sense, they're, they're, they're linked pretty closely, the amino acid sequence and the DNA sequence. Um, you can actually have some more differences in your DNA and have um, the same uh, amino acid sequence because a lot of different, you can have mutations in the uh, DNA or base sequence and still have the same uh, amino acid and the same protein. Um, so we got to look at this word call, called a clade. Um, organisms that came from a common ancestor and uh, species that share characteristics that are different now and a clade uh, a group of species evolved from a common ancestor so we look at a lot of bird species in a second um, 10,000 living species all coming from a common ancestor who look at that handwriting and I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with ginkgo trees but they're pretty cool they they belong to a clade they're a species belong to a clade that died out about 270 million years or that first start evolving 270 million years ago remember time of the dinosaurs and it's still here just that one so it's pretty cool I have a neighbor has a ginkgo tree over here and you see them every once in a while they have very distinctive leaves um that's on a slide coming up but just want to show you this to show you this will be a clade see that came from this common ancestor these happen to be birds that can learn uh by listening here's another clade of birds water birds and birds of prey uh but you can see in this cladogram here where we group these together so the closer you are together like these two um, the more similar you're gonna be ah here's the ginkgo tree yeah it's beautiful and if you just trace out it just I don't know something about it just seems primitive and beautiful I'm right about now around Long Beach like my neighbors the um, all these leaves are turning a bright bright yellow and are starting to fall so um, Good job, Ginkgo, for hanging in there. Um, and he, oh, here's a cool, you can see the outline of that Ginkgo right here. 270 million years, that's a real trip. So this tree over here, in my neighbor's backyard, it looks a lot like this. And that same species was hanging out with dinosaurs like this, you know, 100 million years ago. I mean, that's just pretty awesome. Think about that. This the same species 
surviving through all that time, um, being, uh, you know, living at the same time with the dinosaurs. Totally awesome. Okay, so um, grouping them together, grouping different organisms together, you can look at base sequence or amino acid sequence to, to look for similarities. Remember, we used to use just appearances, but they can be very deceptive because you can look the same, but then be really different inside and vice versa, um, actually. And then, yes, yeah, some look very different, um, but be closely related. The best thing to do is use a base sequence or amino acid sequence. That's the best way, the gold standard that's being used here today. Um, so if you look at this, we have a bunch of letters up here. And if you look closely, what do you see? What letters do you see? A, T, G, C, G, C. You should be looking or noticing you only see four different letters. So if you have four different letters and you have A, T, C's, and G's, you know that this is a base sequence. It's a base sequence of those nucleotides. And Homo sapiens, you know, humans, pan troglodytes, um, chimpanzees, gorilla, gorilla. It's a gorilla. And Pongo pygmaeus is orangutan. And Canis lupus is a wolf. So what we want to do, uh, the way this works to try to look at, get down to uh, relatedness in an evolutionary sense, is look how many differences we see between their um, their letter code. So I'm gonna kind of look. I got this little drawing down here. We're gonna count the number of differences between uh, humans and chimps. So here we got a difference, right? It's a T where for us it's a uh, C. So that's one. Here's two. Here's three. Now let's look at gorilla, gorilla and humans. No differences right here. But then in this line, we do have one difference. And orangutan, no differences up here. Um, but down here we have one, two, three, four, five differences. And with a wolf, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 14 differences. So if we look at just this, we would say we are more similar to the gorilla than the chimp, then less similar to a wolf, uh, less similar to an orangutan than a wolf. So if we drew a, a tree here, we would have the wolf. This is all coming from the last common ancestor, then the gorilla, then the chimp, then I'm running out of space, but this would be uh, the gorilla and then the human. Uh, however, this is only looking at 90 base pairs. If you look at more, you'll eventually see more differences with the gorilla. So we are similar to the gorilla, but more similar to the chimp. And look carefully at these um, letters here. And what are you seeing? You should be saying to yourself, look, I see a lot of different letters there. Look at this Y's, L's, P's, F, A's, V. So it's um, it's not A, T, C's, G's. Okay. And if you see that, you know it's amino acid sequence. Amino acid sequence. And um, Homo sapiens, you know, M musculus. This is a mouse, the common house mouse. So well, we can do the same thing. We can, every one of these letters represents a different um, amino acid, and there's 20, there's 20 different letters. So let's count the number of differences. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven differences. So if we want to make a family tree based on this, we would have to look at um, some you know different organisms and see um, how some of there. Hey dog, it's a, it's okay. This is Jackson. Hey Jackson, you want to say hello? Jackson says hello. That's a good puppy. We're outside because inside my wife's um, has a little party going and 
Jackson likes to get at food and do things. So he's hanging out with me, helping me with this video recording. Right, doggy? That's a good puppy. Just chill. All right. So I think the last thing we have here, yeah, bubble map. Um, you know, comparing these two different ways of looking at relationships. Got nucleic acid sequence, amino acid. Similarly, that they're both you know, related to the genes you have, whatever genes you got um, are going to um, show up in that amino acid sequence and uh, the DNA sequence. They both can show evolutionary relationships and it's kind of a biochemistry way to show that. Um, differences, like we saw when you see, you know, look at those four letters, A, T, C, and G, when we do a new, new uh, base sequence. And amino acid sequence, we have these 20 letters. Um, but they can use, be used interchangeably. This is probably, it depends on your situation, but these will show, the amino acid will see, um, will better show differences. But, like, there will be more differences with the amino acid, the um, base sequence. However, Remember, we're basically proteins. That's what we are, what makes our biology what it is. And uh, <laughs> uh, so similarities in, in, in uh, proteins can actually be a more meaningful way to look at um, uh, biological relationships, evolutionary relationships.